This is the final episode to wrap up the Black Hill series. And we're going to focus on the fascinating fact that this uplifted area was actually once the place where an ancient river flowed. This river preceded both the present day Yarrowee River and the deep leads that would flow from Black Hill post uplift in Ballarat, only to be covered by recent basaltic eruptions, leading to the birth of the Yarrowee River that flows through here today. If you go to the Yarrowee over here, it's not hard to realise that this river is actually pretty new, geologically speaking. It's small, and whilst it does widen out as it continues its journey south and then southeast towards Geelong, it's only between 4 to 7 million years old. Which, compared to the deep leads that preceded it, is very young. Because before this river, we had several older and much larger rivers that flowed south from this area. These rivers began their life during the Horst and Graben events that Ballarat would inevitably experience as a result of the split that occurred between Antarctica and Australia which led to this part of the land becoming uplifted whilst the adjacent block sunk, forming new horizontal faults in a landscape that previously never contained anything remotely resembling these. This fascinates me immensely. I believe the reason why the Ballarat and more notably the Creswick region had the most pronounced recent volcanic activity occurring are because these areas are located at the very top of the Great Dividing Range in this region, essentially acting like a pinch point forming much larger and more pronounced faults than what can be seen in the surrounding areas. Whilst the majority of the western and middle parts of the state are volcanic, this region has some of the most eye-catching volcanic features, especially in the Creswick region. This means that, prior to the split of Antarctica, this area here was level. There was no uplifted and depressed region like there exists today, and it's possible that this uplift is actually still occurring to a very minute extent. So before the immensely gold-rich deep leads that would flow from Black Hill, Black Hill was the site of an ancient river. At least it was in the southwestern part of it, right here, where this split in the fault occurred. How do I know this? Well, physical evidence to my surprise does still exist, even with the Black Hill Mining Company's pronounced activity of literally pulverizing so much of the quartz that once existed here into dust to extract the gold contained therein, that literal ravines and chasms were created inside a once somewhat typical looking hill. But we have this incredible account, which was probably nothing more than a fleeting observation to the person who wrote it. And he wouldn't have had any idea that over 170 years later, some dude would be making a YouTube video about it and noting just how important this lad's observation actually was. This is what he wrote on October the 31st in 1851, which was the year the gold rush began in Victoria. The Black Hill is a particularly interesting geological feature. A spiral ridge of rocks appears on the southwest face, exposing a vein of quartz of great thickness, penetrating clay slate. Near the summit is found steatite, greenstone, and mica slate. These again are found at a point in the form of clays and breccias. The quartz, though existing in masses of perhaps a ton in weight, is invariably rounded and waterworn and in its position generally affording undeniable evidence of an aqueous deposit. This observation didn't make sense to me in my formative years when geology was just beginning to take a grasp on my every waking moment, but I revisited it recently whilst attempting to understand and ascertain how pronounced the Horst and Graben events in Victoria actually were, and a light bulb moment went off in my mind, which obviously blew my mind and has led to this series. The aqueous deposit was what remained after eons of river action occurred here, and I can tell you right now that I'd do anything to go back to this day in 1851 and see it with my own eyes. This tells me that this section here in Black Hill was the river, and that means that post uplift the river gravels and associated deposits began to flow downhill to become deposited within the deep leads that would invariably take the place of the ancient river that was now slowly, inch by inch, turning from a river into a hill and drying up with each passing year. In my eyes this explains why the gravel pits deep lead existed. The gravel pits has always been a weird geological oddity to me. Why is this deep lead literally filled with so many feet worth of gravel? Why aren't other ones the same? What makes it different to the other leads? Where did all this gravel come from and why is it here? Well, I think that this is the best possible explanation for it. It's still not obvious to me whether or not it flowed north to the Murray or south to southeast towards the sea. But if I was to guess, I'd say it was vertical through this break in the fault. And 
That would make sense, considering the mining activity that has occurred here. But I truly do believe this explains the gravel pits, as once Black Hill began to be uplifted, everything began to flow down into the newly forming deep leads that took the place of this ancient river. And as you can see, quite a few did. On geological maps, no areas list any deep leads beginning here. Yet when we go here, we can see alluvial work was definitely done. And the miners, perhaps unknowingly, mined what they thought was nothing more than a simple drainage channel, when actually it was the remains of an uplifted ancient river that flowed at a time when this hill was literally level with the ground adjacent to it. And evidence of this fact can still be seen today, in the river rocks still located all around this alluvial channel, which prove it was alluvial and not colluvial, which would have displayed much more sharper, more angular rocks. These are three perfectly worn down and smooth rocks that I got from the area and brought back home. Which prove that an ancient river once flowed through here. As you can see, they are very rounded in their shape. Proving this area was the site of an ancient waterway that was an important feature to the primordial landscape and wasn't just a minor creek or small gully. So I'd bet this area had some damn good gold and the lads that worked around here probably cleaned up well. But the description of a spiral ridge of rocks was something that always stood out to me when I read these accounts. Why was there a spiral ridge? How did it form? But now it's clear to me that this spiral was a result of the erosion resistant quartz reefs remaining whilst the surrounding less erosion resistant sedimentary and volcanic rocks got broken and worn down around it and carried away over time. Leaving what was once an incredible feature that was mined and the remains of it no longer exist unfortunately. This Horsten Graben action more than likely depressed the many deep leads that would inevitably be mined at a depth of several hundred feet during the gold rush. Unsurprisingly, this form of mining was ridiculously dangerous. And it's also more than likely why Ballarat has a significant amount of erosion, with it being insanely gold rich, but containing gold reefs that are actually pretty low yielding per tonne. Which is perhaps unsurprising to anyone who watched the previous video that I made on this, which explained this phenomenon. Link to that in the description. And all of this has occurred because this landscape has been continually uplifted and is located at the very top of the Great Dividing Range in this part of the land. And the higher a mountain rises, the more pronounced the rate of erosion will be. So today, this mighty hill has almost no indications aside from these water-worn rocks that a flowing river tore through here. But when the early observations of this place were noted, it invariably shows the fact that this was indeed the place where an ancient river flowed eons ago. During a time when Victoria was a very different place. Well before the deep leads, which in themselves are ancient enough. But who knows how long it existed here, and what existed before it. But those days are all gone now, and all we have is this incredible mountain range today, and the old accounts of those that once trekked through here, and initially observed it in its original pre-mining state. All of whom have since passed. Thanks for watching.